But we're going to move on now. There's a lot of other stuff going on around the association. And uh, Damian Lillard, two words. So uh, last night, of course, we mentioned that the Portland Trailblazers drafted Scoot Henderson, who many people expect to be a star. And that is not, not that Dame had anything against Scoot, but he wanted them to trade that pick for a seasoned, really a veteran star, I guess, that could help them compete for a championship. They didn't do it. And we have two developments. So we have the GM, Joe Cronin, last night, Martin, Mm -hmm. who we're about to hear from now. I believe, do we have sound of Cronin? We're going to hear... We're, we're, we're going to hear from him in a second, basically talking about um, he has no plans to trade Damian Lillard. I don't if we don't have it, that's fine. OK, here he is. He said that, you know, I, I would love to see Dame retire a trailblazer. I have zero desire to trade him. Um, I really hope this works out here. And I think you can tell how excited I am about Scoot Henderson. Um, and he has a chance to be you know, a special player in this league. Okay. And then Martin, I don't know if you saw it because it was only about maybe an hour or two, about two hours ago, Mm -hmm. at least the two hours ago when I saw it, Damian Lillard went, I believe on Instagram live and was vibing, bobbing his head to welcome to Miami by Will Smith. Yeah. I saw this mess. So what, when, when did he, when did he run that? Did that, that was today, right? Yeah. Okay, so that, that you you said that with some attitude. Well, yeah. I don't know if you just a surly individual, anti Big Vic, anti Dame, or did you really not like Dame doing it? I don't know, but I want to hear your opinion. Yeah, I didn't like Dame. I'm sick of this mess. I'm sick mm-hmm. of it. Uh, how come Damian Lillard's no trade ask is stronger than Bradley Beal's no trade clause? Like I don't <laughs> understand. Why it's just like this energy and attitude of all, you know, we really, I don't want to trade. Of course you don't want to trade the best player that your franchise has had in the last 15 years. However, if you are doing your job, which objectively is to improve the team. Right. Right. To win games with the goal of eventually winning a championship. You are no closer than you were at game 41 than you were at game 82 this season. And the only difference between the Portland Troy Blazers then and now is Damian Lillard was playing and then he was on the bench because they benched him down the end of the stretch and, you know, low management, so on. He got hurt and then he didn't finish out the season. I don't – look, I am all for the idea of a guy being, as Chris Broussard would say – Ten toes down in a city <laughs> and and locking in right. I especially as a guy who grew up as a fan of small market teams. I right. I, I, I I love that. I love the fact that he has wanted to stay in Portland this whole time. But I if you asked Marcus Smart twenty four hours ago, he would have said I would have loved to retire a Celtic. I'm sure of it. He's up there with Larry Bird and Kevin McHale in terms of playoff games played. Right. So I think I think what you're saying is that the Blazers, regardless of what Dame wants, the Blazers should trade him. Yes. Yes. And look, I don't even think it'll take that. Like, look, I, I was surprised by Damien's Instagram post because I don't think he wants to be traded, but that certainly would make you think, okay, now he's finally got the hint. It's time to leave Portland if I ever want to sniff a championship. That would be nice. I hope so. But I do agree with you, Martin. It is best for Damian Lillard, and it is best for the Portland Trailblazers to part ways. It's over. And to your point, now look, I I would sit down with Dame, try to work, you know, make it an amicable thing. Sure. Not like Marcus Smart got moved. We, we know he's not in the class of Damian Lillard. Sure. But at the same time, I am not making a bad trade just to send Damian to Miami, say, where he said he'd like to go, right? Miami or Brooklyn. Brooklyn, I don't know why he wants to go to Brooklyn. Like, you be in the same situation that you're in in Portland. I mean, you might be a tad bit better in the East with Brooklyn than you are in the West with Portland, but you're not winning the championship. You're not even getting close. Sure. And Miami, people are saying, well, you know, all Dame's done for them. 
they should send him to Miami even if it's not the best deal. Has he been playing for free in Portland? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, like, what, is he doing them all these favors? Yes, he's been a great player there. And he deserves respect. And you should try to work with him. But at the end of the day, as you said, they have to make the best deal for the Portland Trailblazers. And if that means sending him somewhere else, I, I would not want to send him to a bad team. But I'm not going to be locked into the Miami Heat if I don't think they got the best deal. Now, and that's what I want to talk to you about. What do you think is the best place for him or who could make the best deal? I like Boston if they were to give up a Jalen Brown. I like Philadelphia if they were to give up a Tyrese Maxey and maybe a Tobias Harris. I like those better than what I can get from Miami. I'm not getting Bam or Jimmy Butler. So I don't I don't necessarily want anything else they have. Well, the the thing is, if yeah, if I'm trying to turn around and compete in the Western Conference, I would think that maybe Miami doesn't have the best option. Maybe like I get more out of a Jalen Brown uh, from Boston or so on. But I'm expecting if Portland were to make this trade, it's to retool, rebuild around Scoot. And, you know, not to say you'll win when you can, but there's going to be obviously step back along the way. You're not trading an all-NBA guy. That's what Damian Lillard is, a first or second team all-NBA guy when he's playing the commensurate amount of games to qualify. You're not trading him expecting to get better, I don't think. I think that so you're trading him with the expectation that you'll take a step back. I think if you're the Portland Trailblazers, you should take a hard look at the New Orleans Pelicans. The New Orleans Zion? No, no, no. I'm saying just reverse a few years back to the guy who was oh, also oh, oh. in Damian Lillard's draft class, Anthony Davis. They Anthony Davis didn't have a trade, a no trade clause, but there was a place that he was heavily interested in going. The whole world knew about it, and the Pelicans held him over a barrel. And to the point, you look at him a few years later down the line, they've turned Lonzo Ball and the rest of the young Laker core that was the young Laker core either into the core that, when Zion was healthy, was the second or first best team in the Western Conference by record. You got a lot to feel good about. Would you, would you in, trade if the Dame if, if New Orleans would do it for Zion? Would I trade Dame for I would Zion? Want, I would love to get Zion if I'm Portland. I, I'll be honest. I'm all, I'm out on uh, uh, the big fella. Really? Chris. Already? Chris. Look. It, it, already? Yeah. It's, four years in? How'd Joel Embiid look at this point in his career? Joel, he missed the two, for first two and a half years of his career. And somehow managed to play more than 120 NBA games total. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, despite the injuries that he had in the first two years of his career, Zion is no, not available. I, no, but uh, he's more available than Embiid was early in his career. But uh, you talk, I don't see the – I mean, I see – the no, injury I'm just saying comparison. The guy can I get be what you're saying. Early and then you know come out of it. Yeah, but one of them seven feet two two seventy five. Right, would, would make it harder. I think. I hear you, but when I'm looking at guys who getting you getting a soft tissue injury in January and then, and then we're shutting it down until now. The last time we saw Zion from January second so to it's now. Attitude. Look. Whatever attitude, professionalism, whoever you want to call it, there's a fact of the matter that being in good good shape, being in, I was just going to say good, being in the best possible shape that you can be is part of your job as a professional right. athlete. Right. It's part, like very much the same way that if I was going to lose my voice, it's my job to keep my voice together. If I'm going to be on the radio, I, I got to have a voice. Otherwise, I can't work. Right, it doesn't say anything about me as a person. Me, no, as, I if, feel. But I if feel I can't you. talk, then I can't right. do this job. Right, I, so I, I, I feel you. I, look, I don't think Portland, and I know they're a long way from you know competing for a championship, but I'm just saying they see they have young pieces. It's not just Scoop. You've seen Anthony Simons; he can play. Sure, Shaden Sharp; he can play. He's got promise, and I would not. Get rid of all my veterans. You need some veterans. You don't need a superstar veteran when you got a bunch of young players. But you don't want to have all young players. Like Houston, I don't need any more young players down there. All right? Sure. Just get some basic average veterans now with those guys to man the locker room, to show them how to be professional, and to help your team be the best it can be and get the young guys to play up to their potential. I, I, I kind of like Nurkic still with Portland and Jeremy Grant if they re-sign him. 
Um, so I I hear you on that, you know, they might I just don't think they need to I they need to get the best deal. I don't really want Tyler Hero if I'm Portland. He's making a lot of money. I got some g- good perimeter players. I don't need to pay him all that money to be well, my fourth best perimeter player potential. I think, and I, I, I don't know. That's contract, why I kind of like Zion if they could get him well, because he'd be a position you don't have. Well, the thing about the guys like Tyler Hero and stuff like that, we'll have to see how it all plays out with the new CBA in place. And I'm not trying to bore anybody because let's be honest, I didn't read it and neither did uh, neither did the listeners, right? But right. it seems as if there's going to be some real some real prohibitions right. against not spending, right? So if you're you're gonna have to field the team, it seems that there's there's punishments for going over the second apron and trying to come in under, you know, the the salary floor. So a guy like Tyler Hero, I think, may have value just as a salary, almost in the same way that Jordan Poole, well, I mean, essentially, realistically, for all intents and purposes, Golden State had a salary dump, and they just yes. happened to get Chris Paul back. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there was a, but it was a salary dump. Right. But the Wizards are incentivized to take the salary in part because they got to pay somebody for the next two, three years right. to right. fill their roster. So I think that Tyler Hero's value, while it's kind of backwards and it's almost disrespectful to him as a player, could have another extra level when it all comes down to that. But the thing that interests me, and I was trying to get this out before we went to commercial in the last break, sorry for stepping on you, we were talking about the uh, international players, uh, you know, the Lucas and the Zions, I mean, the Luca and the Giannis's and so on, right? Right. These guys are going and playing professionally really before American kids are getting driver's licenses. And part and that's kind of the argument as to why they come out a little more polished, right? Right. Uh, it's in Scoot played two years in this G League Ignite. I wonder just how much of, quote-unquote, going to the American school of basketball, for lack of a better term. Like, you know, if you assume that Jokic went to the Serbian school of basketball, he's playing pro at a yeah. certain age. I wonder what the impact will be after seeing it for two seasons, when, especially when you hear about the reporting out of how he comes out of these workouts and he's just so intense in his workouts and so seemingly uh, so purposeful in his workouts. It makes me wonder just how he'll be able to deal with some of the levels of professionalism like old and Paul and I was talking about a minute ago. We are talking about road trips and so on. So it makes me think, what is Scoot going to be really? Like, I want, I think it's a, a quantity you can't call right now in terms of okay. that aspect. All so right, we go, there we might go be something a, there. 